Hey everybody, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm reviewing an upcoming Mission Marathon reward. It is the TS-5. This is a Tier 8 non-turreted American super heavy tank destroyer and it'll be the first Tier 8 premium American tank destroyer in the game. So I guess it's going to be interesting for all of you super heavy tank destroyer players out there and for everyone else who doesn't want to participate in the Mission Marathon or wants to keep their money to themselves, I'll let you know how to deal with these when they come out on the battlefield very soon. So without a doubt, the best way to get an idea of how the TS-5 is going to play is going to be to compare it to the non-premium, non-turreted American tank destroyer, the TE-28, which its gameplay will very closely resemble. The TS-5, however, fires half a round a minute more, giving it a really nice DPM of 2,823. To put that into perspective, it gives the tank one of the highest damage per minutes of any Tier 8 tank destroyer, coming in just behind the Yag Tiger 88 and ahead of vehicles like the AT-15 or even the infamous WZ-121. And so consequently, you don't really want to sit in front of one of these things for very long and be careful because they're going to out-trade you in your Tier 8, 9 or even Tier 10 heavies if you allow them to get multiple shots in. So the ammunition that the TS-5 uses is very similar to the T-28. Its standard rounds have 248 millimeters of penetration, more than enough, and its premium rounds have heat with 300 millimeters of penetration, which is just three millimeters better than the APCR rounds that you get on the T-28. And while, of course, the heat rounds are going to be great at long range to try and bludgeon your way through thick armor, they don't have the, the shell velocity that those APCR rounds will have on the T-28, so it can be a little bit tricky to snipe. But one thing that's a bit bizarre about these rounds is that they actually have better shell velocity than the armor-piercing rounds do. How that works out, I'll never know. All right, so let's move on to gun handling in the TS-5. While it's very much more inaccurate than the T-28 is, it has better aim time, dispersion when moving, and dispersion when turning the gun. So that means that this thing is definitely going to be able to snapshot way faster than the T-28 will be able to. But if you try to engage at long range in this tank, you are going to be whiffing all manner of shells. A mention should be made that while this vehicle has impressive gun elevation of 20 degrees, its gun depression is 5 degrees, which is absolutely awful, and you can really feel that when you crest this tank over a ridgeline and expose that lower plate, spoilers more on that in a second, uh, that's where your damage is going to be taken. And when you're in such a cumbersome tank that is very vulnerable to being tracked, that's not really where you want to be hanging around. Next up, mobility, and it's good news, bad news here for the TS-5. It has a better top speed limit of the T-28, and a better reverse speed and that can be very useful to stop your opponents from being able to flank you but the power to weight ratio of this vehicle is worse as it has less grunt in the engine and it's also just a tiniest bit heavier. Consequently this means that while the vehicle has the same tank traverse because of this power to weight it's actually got much less effective traverse than the T28 does and so you, you should have a great opportunity to flank these tanks and if you're playing these vehicles and you want to do everything that you can possible to try and keep your back to the wall or be able to try and keep your enemies at a distance which kind of defeats the point of having the terrible accuracy on the tank right okay armor now this is where the ts5 is fantastic frontally you'll be hard pressed to pen this thing unless you have more than 200 millimeters of penetration which a lot of tier 6 and tier 7 tanks that this vehicle will meet won't have and even some tier 8s are going to bounce fairly reliably off even the weaker points of the frontal armor but as soon as the ts5 angles to the side that makes the lower plate all the more effective and the side armor still stays at an impressive 240 millimeters and because of the way that the tracks are shaped they don't go over the front of the hull i think a lot a lot of people are going to be shooting the side of the TS-5 in the tracks here and just not damaging the tank at all because the hull is kind of boat shaped underneath. So imagine this like a T-95. You don't want to shoot the front tracks, you want to try and hit those rear tracks and then you'll enter the tank and also immobilize it. The obvious position to shoot the TS-5 on the other hand is to hit this cupola on top and while you should be able to go through with about 180 millimeters of penetration, when it's moving left and right, up and down, it, it could still be quite tricky to hit. When we compare this to the armor that the T-28 has, for example, we see that it's pretty much on par, and I'd say while the TS-5 has the superior upper hull armor, it has the weaker lower plate than the T-28. If you do manage to flank this tank, try and shoot this soft squishy bit at the back of it. Even high penetration, high explosive rounds will be entering the vehicle here and then you can maximize your damage potential. Hit points wise, this vehicle gets a big old slab 1,500, the same as the T-28, which gives these two tanks fantastic durability, which enables the TS-5 to play as a frontal assault tank. A passing mention should be made to the 370 meters view range that this vehicle has, which leaves it in a very 
very awkward state because I personally really like to take a toolbox on a tank like this or at least two repair kits. Otherwise you will find yourself locked in place and unless you can get your tracks back on you are the easiest sitting duck ever. However, to do so comes at the expense of the view range of the vehicle and I have barely over 400 meters which really isn't going to spot at a decent distance. Nevertheless, how you choose to set up your TS5 will likely be to match your playstyle. I personally want to play this tank as an all-in frontal brawler, although a lot of people might like to, to have the armor of the tank to siege their opponents at long range. The vehicle's five crew slots, as we can see up here, including two loaders, will perfectly match a vehicle like the T110E3. And so if you absolutely love that tank, then this is going to be a great crew trainer for you. But anyway, let's cut to the chase and get stuck into some combat. All right, so here we go. We're rolling out on Lakeville, and yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, look at the matchmaking. It's great. Yeah, plus two for this tank, uh, a vehicle which very much depends on the enemies to not have ultra high amounts of penetration, and uh, this scenario is very nice for the vehicle as well, because guess what I'm going to do on Lakeville? Yeah, let's plow straight down the valley. Now, of course, I've got to worry about two self-propelled guns on the enemy team, but really, what else am I going to do in this tank? I guess I could hang around at the back and wait for the enemies to push and try and get some chancy ambush shots on them. But I, I really don't feel like that is the meta, at least for me in this vehicle. Why, why would I want to play this tank when there's so many better tanks that I could be playing? Sure, it's got the durability, but that durability doesn't mean anything at the end of the game when you don't have the traverse speed to be able to re-engage opponents who maybe are trying to flank you. I feel like you want to keep everybody in front of this tank and you just want to use that raw DPM. And again, I like to equip this vehicle with a probably a large repair kit so you can manage to, to repair a little bit faster when your tracks are off. It does give you that 10% advantage as well as a toolkit so that even if I do get tracked, we're going to be able to surprise our opponents hopefully. All right, well, the artillery has already begun, but luckily didn't actually manage to do too much to us. The KV-85 on the enemy team has pushed forwards to a point where I'm just going to give him a casual little slap. And now the GW Tiger P has actually been lit up by my view range here. Bit of a mistake there by him. And I already get locked down in the tracks and the T-29 locks me down as well. I'm thinking, okay, look how quickly we get our tracks back on. And there you go, that ugly 0.44 accuracy that this tank has rears its ugly head as we don't manage to shoot the GW Tiger P. And I'm thinking, well, I won't try and shoot the Tiger P again. I'll let the artillery do the work for me, get 440 spotting and just decide to pick apart the KV-85. Now the T-150 shoots my inner track, and remember what I was saying about the fact that our hull doesn't actually stretch over the front of the tracks, so the T-150 doesn't actually manage to damage us. But oh man, look at the traverse speed that this tank has. Now obviously everybody knows that when you're playing on Lakeville, that, that it's very awkward managing to traverse your vehicle, because this is definitely soft terrain. But keep in mind that it just oh, it really holds the vehicle back so much. Now, I want to get forwards. I want to try and push into this T-29 to stop him from being able to flank me. And that allows me to manage to reload. And even with my crew stunned, the DPM that this vehicle has does feel impressive. When you combine it with things like Brothers in Arms and Kohler, and you've got the thing fully equipped up with a gun rammer and vents, yeah, you really do feel like you're, you're packing out a lot of damage very quickly. But look at this traverse speed. No, I, I, I'm not... I'm not stunned. I, I don't have, like, well, you obviously can't move in World of Tanks if you don't have a track. But, like, all oh, the traverse speed is absolutely horrific. And I'm not sure if yellow tracks actually do decrease your traverse speed. That's something that, wow, I've been playing this game for, like, what, nine years now? I never, never thought about that. But let's not worry about that now. Let's worry about the fact that this S1 is right in front of us. But, oh, well, I'm going to try and get the Achilles. But you notice how I always have to make awkward movements in this vehicle over a ridge line and that is because this tank just has such awful gun depression and so while the s1 is able to easily work that position i just can't all right finally i get to repair my gun so i can accurately shoot the s1 but he is going right into my lower plate right now ladies and gents and that's just what you have to expose in this scenario what can i do and i'm really nervous about firing here sure i have a tiny shot on him but if i miss that shot he pulls back over the ridge line, and then he's probably going to be able to take me down. So, well, at least 50% of the time with the amount of hit points that I have remaining. And so I wait. And oh god, light tank. Goes up on the hill. Nice play there by the HWK, but manages to bounce a shot off. Now I want to get my butt to the wall behind me. The Achilles shoots me, kills my driver. 5-4 manages to repair my driver. And now we've got the HWK right where we want him, but I make a terrible misplay here. I've been playing a little bit too much classic server, and I don't keep my reticle down in third person. But we managed to ram him for 152, but the OI actually saves us there. And you'll see in a second, well, hopefully, at least I remember. This, this was today that I played this replay. Do I say thank you to the OI? Please say I say thank you to the OI. Oh, there you go. Okay, yes, yeah, so I say thank TYOI. 
because he definitely did save me there. But do you notice just how awkward the traverse speed is in this vehicle? It truly does feel as if you're playing something more like a Jagdpanzer E100. But the problem is that uh, I think when everybody gets to tier 10, the, the vehicles are gigantic, they're large, and I think their mobility all in all goes down apart from some of the medium tanks. For this thing, with its 400 alpha, it just doesn't feel like you've got that alpha damage shot to stop people from taking the chance to flank you. And oh, for me that feels incredibly awkward. It's not like you're you're packing 750 alpha damage in an ISU-152. Nobody wants to drive in front of an ISU-152 to get the side and take 750 damage. It doesn't matter what tank you're in, that's going to hurt. The TS-5, while it has all of the DPM in the world, I don't know about you guys, but I'd probably be willing to take 400 damage in a variety of vehicles, even light tanks, if I know that it's going to allow me to get to the side and then I can shoot the tank again and again and again through this position to be able to take off the tracks. Now I ask the team, kill all please, because why would we cap? We, there's, there's, there's two tanks left on the enemy team, we've got eight tanks, come on guys, we can do it! So I ping the map a few times because I guess I'm a bit bloodthirsty and hungry in the TS-5 to try and kill this P-43. And the game should end in 3, 2, 1, but luckily the T-29 gets a kill which allows us to put an extra shot into the P-43 on the enemy team. And that's, that's all she wrote here for the, the TS-5. I mean... What more is there really to say about this tank? It's got frontal armor, it's got bad traverse speed. It's got an incredible rate of fire, which is lovely to, to work around with. But it, it's it's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, really. This thing, it, it's a one-trick pony, ladies and gentlemen, that is simply designed to try and do everything that it can to keep its opponents in front of them and then punish them for staying there. So while this was an ace for the TS-5, I guess that's because nobody's really playing it on the server at the moment. Nevertheless, 1,246 base experience points, 3,000 damage in our four kills, 96,000 credits profit. But we've probably got to take about 10 to 15,000 credits away from the uh, the total there for the ammunition that we needed to resupply. And a vehicle like this in a matchup like that, if you can survive, goes hand in hand with a steel wall medal. As you would expect with a tank with such thick frontal armor where only tanks like the Stritzwang S1 could really contest us frontally. And so all in all, what do I think about the TS-5? Well, it's a bit of a one-trick pony, really. Just keep your enemies in front of you, no flexibility to be able to re-engage them if they flank you. It's definitely not my cup of tea, but there's probably many super heavy tank destroyer players out there who have wanted something new that isn't a Yag Tiger 88. And so for those tankers out there, yeah, the TS-5 is a pretty good vehicle. And thankfully, the vehicle has enough differences from the T-28 with its better damage per minute, but significantly worse accuracy. It's better top and reverse speed, but it's worse engine power and significantly worse traverse speed. It's got a much weaker lower plate, but its upper hull is stronger. But it does give it a, a kind of novel feel while not just being flat out overpowered. Now, whether the question is worth it or not is probably a question that only you can answer. All that I can say is that this tank is definitely not my personal playstyle. I know that if I was to play this too many times in a row, I would get incredibly frustrated about being tracked and flanked by vehicles that just can simply outmaneuver you. But for players out there who don't need to have flashy mobility and just want to have enough armor to stay in the game long enough to put a few shots in to make some much needed credits for their other vehicles, then while the, the TS-5 isn't really going to be rewriting the meta of the game, it doesn't really have too much competition for alternatives to its fairly novel playstyle. And so that's it for today, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down and stay tuned to the channel as I will be fully reviewing the upcoming Mission Marathon, which will enable you to get this vehicle for up to free in the next couple of days. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.